Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take a look at a current source. Here we have the Norton equivalent of a linear circuit, which has a current source and a resistor in parallel. That resistor is known as the Thevenin resistance, also known as the Norton resistance. They are equal to one another. And we have terminals A and B onto, onto which we then attach a load circuit or a load resistor. The current through the load resistor will be equal to the current provided by the source times the ratio of the re internal resistance, which is the Thevenin resistance, or also called the Norton resistance, divided by the total resistance but with the load resistor and the Norton resistance. Notice when we see the equation like that, as the Norton resistance goes to infinity, as it becomes very large, if the internal resistance is very large, then most of the current will go through the other branch, meaning the low resistor, or consequently also, if the low resistor becomes very small, again, the current will tend to go through the low resistor, and then the, load, the current through the low resistor will approximate the current of the source, the Norton current. However, if the internal resistance becomes very small, then the current will tend to go through the internal resistance rather than to the low resistor, or if the low resistor becomes very large, then the current through the low resistor goes to zero. So an ideal current source, you would expect the current through the low resistor to stay constant regardless of the value of the low resistor, but that's not the case. In a real scenario, the current through the low resistor will decrease as the low resistor gets large as compared to the internal resistance or the Norton resistance. If we were to graph it like this, the, the graph will then look as follows. If the low resistor goes to zero, we reach maximum current, meaning the current will be equal to the Norton current. But as the low resistor gets larger, the current drops in value. So the equation will be graphed like this. And you can see as the resistance gets larger and larger and larger on the load, the current to the load will get smaller and smaller and smaller. And you would have to find a way to compensate for it if you don't want it to look like that. So now you can see the difference between a real current source and an ideal current source. An ideal current source wouldn't have this drop off, it would continue to provide the current regardless as to the size of the load resistor. However, in a real situation, you can see that the current tends to drop off as the load resistor gets larger and it gets a smaller and smaller percentage of the current delivered by the source. We have some examples coming up that will now show us how to actually calculate the actual current on the low resistor or the voltage across the gap between A and B. Again, depending upon the voltage source like we saw in the previous video and the current source in this video. So if you're interested, stay tuned. We'll have a couple examples for you.